to watch all of my exclusive content not featured here on my channel, log on to my website at I'm just here to make you think.com slash fumes. OCO to everyone that is watching at this time. If you're coming in late, that's okay. This will probably be posted later. But uh, I, we could we could get started with the questions right now. Um, I don't want to state your name, but you were the first one to get in here, sister. One second, let me unmute that side. That are, that's in my hangouts right now. Do you have a question or a comment? Me? Yes. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I know that was kind of oh, weird, about... right? No, 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 it's okay. But your questions or comments? Um. Well, I do have a question. Like, the information that you give out, you mm -hmm. know, I uh, take it to work with me and I try to share with like my coworkers and everything, like the teachers I work with and stuff. And basically, um, when I give them the information, uh, they always go to like, basically like scientific, give out saying that everybody, even the people who are Aboriginal um, Americans are from first, were in Africa and I'm just like it's a little confusing to me because like um I don't know it's, it's just a little confusing like I have no argument for that because I'm really not too familiar with um with what they're saying but you know I have been listening to you and um I try to explain it but I really don't know how to explain it do you understand what I'm asking like yeah trying to say yeah so you're saying that basically uh, the people that you're sharing the information with are uh, just automatically reverting back to the story that they have been told to, I mean, told about already, uh, which is somehow everybody came from Africa. I think the best way for them to understand that is to start asking direct questions, uh, whether or not like they checked any records, like to make logical sense of if that actually happened then okay. how how did it happen like they're saying that they brought 12.5 million enslaved africans from africa to the americas but how was that even possible when they were using sailboats right where was the room for uh the cargo along with having enslaved africans on that same boat as well as supplies that will allow them to survive over the months going allegedly through the streams of the Atlantic right? from no matter what, you know, weather condition it was. I mean, that's another thing that plays a factor. If it was summertime, sailboats, you know, they had these little things to look like. I call them uh, bed sheets up in the sky <laughs> in order for the wind to guide them through the streams. Did they have enough wind? You know, right. now if it was winter, were they, uh, how were they able to protect themselves from the cold weather? Right. It was a lot of factors that would play on that uh, to figure out uh, if you can talk with them to make it seem, uh, make them think, excuse me, rather to, you know, to talk about some form of science that they'll, you know, revert back to that they were told about. I would want them to make right. logical sense of the whole entire situation. Like, think about it logically. Does that make sense? Does it make right. sense that those people came like that with no problems and um then the another thing would be going back to check the records and that's another thing that's the main thing a lot of people you know i don't know why they do this but they turn their nose up to checking records and those records right. exist they do have the records of which boats what time period 
disembark embark those records do exist and then a person can individually find out if their family came off of those boats and that would debunk the entire thing but uh so yeah i mean trying to i wouldn't if i were you i wouldn't try to convince them with the uh with that i would i would more so tell them uh we'll ask them questions fire back questions uh -huh. uh fire back questions to make them think about what they're saying and that should work and that should oh, work okay thank you, thank you. <laughs> no problem at all was it any other questions or comments um not right now okay if you think of anything don't hesitate to let me know um I think I lost the other gentleman that was on there. It sounded like he was on a cell phone. He dropped off twice already. Okay. Um, he probably, I think he was in the car. Let me see something here. The other patrons check your inbox. Um, you do have the direct link at this time. And I'm gonna see, check, I'm gonna check and see if you guys are now posting it up under the post of which I can't see. There it is. Dwayne, I agree. Um, it should be more ships, but I mean, keep in mind they're considering them ships when they were sailboats. But yeah, I mean, it will make sense if they had, um, I mean, a vast amount of slave ships. But uh, were they commercially being produced that way back then? I don't have any record of that. I really don't have any record of that, and um, that that's a another question. Uh, than anybody could formulate to question uh, that particular era uh, during the so-called transatlantic slave trade. Now, what we can prove that is on record, and uh, I mean, not only in the United States, but nearly everybody's national archives, like the London, uh, England National Archives, Archives of Spain, you can check and see where they took the indigenous people of this land and immigrated them to. You can see that. Uh, like I said, they bought lands on the west coast of Africa from the French in order to accommodate those abandoned lands that were there. Very little people were living there at that time. And very little people came from here to that land. Very little. They couldn't grab everybody. Of course, everybody wasn't in agreement with that. But, um, and of course, and if we go back down even further down the line, we can tell that they did more shipping of indigenous, peop indigenous people from this land to places like Europe or Africa or so-called Africa. That happened inside of, you can check the uh, London, England National Archives records and you can see that for yourselves. The form of slavery that that we were told is totally different from the form of slavery uh, that actually happened. Uh, people are getting a lot of the points confused as if people were wearing chains and shackles, uh, all of them. And that, oh, that particular person is considered to be a slave when that's not the case. What you're looking at is what their duties were. Their duties were indentured servitude. They were being paid to do something some form of labor that has nothing to do with slavery now if anything the way slavery was back then is the same way slavery is now when you get locked up your property of the state when, when you're arrested and you're behind bars your property of the state and they make those people or those inmates do things for the uh, for particular states they go out rake leaves for example that's laboring but that's in a form of chains and shackles because they are being uh, managed by their overseer or by their supervisor in which, you know, back then they want to claim slavery, slave masters. It's the same thing that's just happening in modern times. Uh, but I don't know why that was blown out of proportion that way to make it. I, I, the only thing that I could state to for the reason behind blowing that out of proportion the way it has been is fear mongering to make people believe uh that those stories to 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 like decimate their literacy one and to you know quell revolts from happening or 
possible rebellions uh, that could have occurred and that actually have occurred. I mean, because of course our ancestors wasn't taking that crap back then. We weren't listening to that. Those type of stories weren't floating around during that time period anyway. We got these new forms of slavery stories at the very late to t uh, very late 1800s at the top and at the top of the 1900s these are brand new stories okay and i exposed to uh, uh to go back to uh, the sister's question uh, and maybe you can use this as well i meant to mention this um the person that created the out of africa story was a german his name was franz boaz um, he was the grandfather of anthropology uh, that started the idea behind people that look like you and I all originated from Africa. Um, and then, of course, Darwinism by Charles Darwin and his father took it steps further to make it seem as if everybody came from Africa based off his uh, perception of natural selection. And then they, you know, they were confused. They were trying, it's basically pseudoscience. They were trying to figure out where did they come from originally, meaning of the, you know, pale skin complexion. And then he took it upon himself to match it up with monkeys. I mean, if we evolved from monkeys, why do we still have monkeys today? I mean, this is logical thinking, Log and this is the reason why I said to question everything. Because then you're going to notice the loopholes that they left <laughs> in, inside of this form of American history and world history. And you'll be able to combat it immediately. If long as you're controlling your own mindset and stop utilizing ideas or opinions or AKA facts from other people that you've never seen before. Like you're believing in something versus knowing something. And that's the that's a correction that has to be made. Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, that will work. I mean, because see, you're you're and there are also teachers that watch me, uh, professors and doctors, and uh, they all agree anthropologists, especially anthropologists, because they know for a fact that um, Franz Boas was very pseudo and very biased with his ideology, very biased with his observation on where people of color originated from. And then on top of that, he was being paid uh, as well as uh, when he passed this information along uh, to W.E.B. Du Bois, W.E.B. Du Bose, and Melville Herskovix. Those are the two people that streamlined the out of Africa theory, um, especially after the time of Great Depression. That that's what that's where all of this came from. That's where all of this stemmed from. And then right behind that came uh, Pan-Africanism. And of course, you know, William had his name all over that, and I'll go into that soon. The uh, side of the out of Africa theory has uh, been proven to be inaccurate. A long time ago, even before I created this channel, this was um, uh, proven to be inaccurate by other sciences or forms of sciences, anthropologists especially, but due to the fact that those uh, traditional methods of Darwinism was utilized in order to come up with that answer. And those scientists recognized that and they exposed it. Just like it was, for example, um, the reason how I know genealogy DNA testing uh, results is fraudulent is because genealogists came out and stated <laughs> that it was fraudulent. They straight up, they're stating that they're making it up. My question is, is okay, all right, you're, you're making it up. My biggest question is, what are you doing with the data that you collect from the living people? You're charging them 59 to $300 to get paper results that looks like a certificate, like they just graduated from high school. But what are you doing with that person's genetic data? And then when I investigated what they were doing with that genetic data, then I knew they had a different agenda behind it. And especially who they're selling it directly to. I said, oh man, you know, and I'm not going to mention any names because one of those people were using their platform right now. And they're a major player in it. Okay. Um, but yeah, but it's a, it's a lot of stuff going on that does need to be questioned. Uh, 
does need to be questioned a lot and i was hoping that people would catch the uh multiple it was multiple hidden messages that i put inside of the video uh when i was talking about the one plus one equals three there was a lot of hidden messages in there and one of them um i'm going to share with you guys is the method of a form of science again is mathematics and how that religion and other social engineering experiments the word behind experiments would mean magic you can look that up but the point the point that i was trying to make the main point the main argument that i was trying to uh, point out to everyone was they're eliminating the feminine characteristics of the circle of life all of us came from our mother's womb everybody came from our mother's womb so what are you doing when you're eliminating that feminine characteristic that's not promoting life that's promoting death that's what i have a problem with and i was trying to show people multiple layers after multiple layers on how they did it and how easily our people were manipulated excuse me all people were manipulated let me say it that way because keep in mind those non-elite and i keep saying this those non-elite white folks got taught the exact same thing no difference you had to pay an arm and a leg to get told uh taught a or to have a liberal education verbatim coming from uh former president woodrow wilson he stated that when they started uh creating the industrialist society that you see today that it's still prevailing and as well as the compulsory public educational institutions which are the uh public schools in general and colleges and universities this is the stuff that we need to talk about in order for us to make the correct changes and then we could go further and then we could go further and roderick knowledge plus wisdom equals understanding man plus woman equals child one plus one equals three that is absolutely correct that is absolutely correct see i, I don't people want to think that in order for things to change that we have to go to war and we got to pick up guns and, dah, 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 and no we don't the first thing that was attacked was our mindset so we have to actually go back and take control over our mindsets once again we should not be allowing other people to dictate our lives for us and the way we think we shouldn't have to follow by somebody else's rules and regulations now i'm not stating that it shouldn't be rules and regulations but why do we have to follow their traditional methods instead of our own i mean we know what's right and wrong right we i mean we know right and wrong we could start there our traditional ways you know um from our ancestors we're, we're losing it i mean not too many people knows how to farm number one not the people not all the people that i meet some of them are still farming but that that should be like a big thing because what happens say for instance something happens and you need to be able to go to a grocery store to get food you're dependent on that grocery store but if something happens where you can't make it there or if something happens to the grocery store what if something does come out and state that oh these grocery stores are adding in snitchy and this half inside of their foods and doing something to the food i'm just stating like what if that happens what are you going to rely back on what, what are you going to fall back on if you have the audacity and and the knowledge to farm then you wouldn't need anybody else to take care of your uh food your food needs same thing will go for economic needs same thing will go for educational needs I, it, it will it will trickle down the line i think that we should be putting the focus on being more independent more so than anything because when i travel around the world uh 
That's the difference that I'm seeing from our people and other people. Our people are more dependent on a, uh, on a, a method that was created by the government that's at play right now. And I don't think that should be because if we travel to different areas and those of you that have can, can speak on this, they're living differently. Um, and they're living very independently. And I think that's exactly what, what's needed uh, as an overall perspective in general, just generally speaking. And then we could tackle the, you know, the proper dialogues of making some positive changes as a people, as a whole. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, I, I think that's not, that's one of the things that are missing and, and not necessarily being talked about. Uh, but yeah, I just, uh, I, I wanted to, you know, talk to you guys on my Patreon and let you guys know that I really appreciate uh, what you guys have been doing for me um, over the years and that it has helped me uh, grab particular records that I never had access to and a lot of people don't have access to and I'm glad that that is happening uh, because I'm going to I'm going to of course I'm going to hold it and republish it and um, books that I'm presenting uh, very shortly here and documentaries that I'm going to be posting and of course the movies as well because these documents and records have to come out I'm just not going to be holding them I have to put them back out uh, especially for those that are unable to pay for them because they're very costly. And I mean records as far as history that is not being talked about. It's almost like it's hidden, especially with the price tag they put on it. I uh, do have the records now of the uh, Virginia Company, which is AKA the Virginia Company of London. You might have heard me mention this before. Uh, the Congregation for Propagating the Gospel in Foreign Parts. Okay, this is the company that established the colony of Virginia. I finally have those records, all of them. And I mean all 15 volumes, and each volume is 800 to 1,000 pages long. Um, what I'm gonna be doing is the next, I think it's the next in two or three documentaries, I'm breaking it down is to make it more simple. Uh, for people to understand and to do their research on. I mean, because everything that I share, I want you guys to understand that regardless if even if you may see some people stating, oh no, wait, I, I, I disagree. Everything that I'm stating is publicly verifiable, period. No if, ands, or buts about it. But these records and what, what struck me, what really struck me is that these records, now we're talking about it according to history, they state, that the Virginia colony was the first colony that was established in America, okay? But according to their records, it wasn't. It wasn't. Now, history states that it was established in 1606. John Smith, you know, Captain John Smith came over from London, England. BS, he did, but they didn't establish it in 1606. That's when, that's when the charter was sent down to them from King James, what is the charter? The charter is another form uh, to, uh, or another uh, word for uh, uh, fund. There we go. He funded the Virginia company to get that done. And by the way, it was four charters, not three. King James sent out four, not three. I don't know why history is saying three when it was actually four. And the reason why they were hiding certain things was to showcase uh, that, oh, they brought Africans over here. And according to these records, and I'm talking about as far as history is concerned, they'll say that, that the first Africans arrived in 1619, Jamestown, Virginia, and of course I debunked that. But here's another thing to add to that. Not only were the first African, not only did not the first Africans arrived in Jamestown, 1619, these records, there was no mention of Africa or African, none, it doesn't exist, none. I'm talking about thousands and thousands and thousands of pages and no mention of Africa, none, no mention of Africa or Africans. As a matter of fact, no mention of Americans. The terms that they utilized was Negro Indians. Indians. 
and Negroes. Now, this is another thing that I mentioned and I knew I threw everybody for a loop when I mentioned this before. When I told them that these people were sent back, I'm talking about the people that were so-called being brought here uh, by way of the, you know, the, the uh, Dutch warships that uh, robbed the San Juan Batista from the Philippines. They were coming from the Philippines and uh, met them at the Gulf of Mexico. <coughs> Excuse me. What they did with those people, those 20 and odd Negroes, AKA 20 and odd Negras is what originally John Raw said and they misquoted them. Okay, where they went, I told you then that they went back to the East Indies. Now, when you look at the historical records and ancient maps of where the East Indies is located, that's all of South America. And the West Indies was considered North America at that time. So, according to now, now records, the West Indies will be the Caribbean islands. Now, when you look at these records, and I mean thoroughly, look at these records from the Virginia Company, you're gonna notice that they are stating that they brought these people that they said from the West Indies. From the West Indies. Now we're talking 1600s. That means it's this land, right? I say, wait a minute. So the people that they're referring to as Negroes are either us or the Caribbean Islanders, not Africans, not Africans. When I, when I stated that they came, where did they go? And I'm talking about even Malcolm X stated it. Martin Luther King stated it. They told you they landed on Plymouth Rock, right? That's what he said. That was his famous quote, Plymouth, Massachusetts. Now here's how history would treat, uh, would, would, would treat the whole situation. History would tell you that the colony of Plymouth wasn't established until after the Virginia company established the Virginia uh, colony. That's a lie. In fact, the Virginia colony was not established until after the fourth chapter that was granted by King James. This is how I know they were lying about when King James left and put his son Charles in there in 1627. Because according to those records by the Virginia company and another form of records that I'm gonna state right now called the statues at large concerning the Virginia laws between the 1600s to the 1800s, they told you that that was King James that did that. Not Charles, not his son. That was James. And it was in 1627. You could look up, uh, is it Hernings records? Look up Hernings records on the uh, statutes at large of the uh, all laws concerning Virginia, the colony of Virginia. I could not believe that they were lying, but at the same time, I knew what I stated earlier this year was true. That the people that they were referring to when they said Africans was whites. Because yeah, the first Africans did arrive here in America in 1619, but it wasn't in Jamestown, Virginia, nor was it in Virginia. It was in Plymouth, Massachusetts. That colony was established before the Virginia Company established the colony of Virginia. Hands down. That's according to their records. So now we officially know who the Africans were. Now, when you look up the term African, it was already referred to the whites a long time ago. You were referring to the whites. Keep in mind that they didn't have a tribe to connect with. This is the reason why I try to tell people, I, I try to click it on their mind when I state that America and uh, Africa is a country. No, 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 they're continents. I said my point exactly. They're continents. People would consider themselves who they are by tribe association, not by a continent. Not by a continent. The only people that you see do that are these people that are over here and maybe some enumerators or census takers. 
Oh, they Asians. Oh, they Africans. They labeling them that. That way. You go to a different area of landmass, <laughs> they're not doing that. They're not doing that, not at all. These are multiple things that need to change. And of course, I'm going to be displaying these records. It's about time uh, that these records and, and these records, it, it took a while. Um, it took a while for them, you know, for them to send that, but I have it now. But it wasn't, it wasn't called Jamestown, Virginia. Uh, and this is the reason why people can't know the real story about what happened in that area, because that area wasn't called Jamestown. It was called James City. And of course, they were speaking broken English um, at that time. So the word city was spelled differently, just like the word Indian was spelled differently. Throughout all of these records, the word city was spelled C-I-T-T-Y the majority of the times. And then it was C-I-T-T-Y-E and like a few other times and C-Y-T-Y-E. Like they were, they were changing the spelling up. And I think I, I can't pinpoint if that was purposely done or not. But at the same time, I saw those records and I said, uh oh, this is the reason why people can't see certain things that they were changing because the names were different. The names were totally different back then. And this is the reason why I was trying to explain to people the reason why it wasn't Jamestown and it was, uh, uh, it was supposed to be uh, Fort Monroe, AKA now Hampton, Virginia was because of the name changes. At first it was called, it was called Old Point Comfort, Virginia, then Fort Monroe, Virginia, and now Hampton, Virginia, they started changing the names. They do this all the time though. You could, you could see that throughout the records. Now you already know that they took your language or you didn't. Okay. Well, I mean, they took your ancestors land. They took your ancestors cultures, traditions, uh, let's just say a form of religion, let's say spirituality, uh, heritage and history. What makes you think they're not going to take your language? Keep in mind the U S census in 1790 said free whites. Free from what? Free from who? So you had to adapt something that wasn't yours from the get go. And this is the reason why I want people to look closely at those surnames. I want you to look at the history of the surnames. Remember when I told you that everything that was ever told to us was told to us in reverse? You see how these people are trying to tell you that these surnames came from Europeans and oh, they got website this and website that that could trace your name back to some European in a different country. What if I told you that the surnames came from you? What if I told you that? They came from you and they adapted your last name in order for them to be adopted in a tribe. Here's another reason why, because when you look at the records, it wasn't all adults coming over here and immigrating. They did the same thing in Africa and in the place that they call the Middle East. Wh who were they immigrating? Children. Children. If you take a look at old books like uh, Oliver Twist and my favorite one was Fiddler on the Roof. If y'all never seen that movie, look at Fiddler on the Roof. And Oliver Twist, matter of fact, they got a movie for Oliver Twist also. Look at those the, that's telling you about the immigrants here. They were at that time called peasants. That's the reason why Martin Luther King told you that they were, uh, they were trying to, uh, what, what was his word verbatim? He said, um, they were trying to undergird their white peasants with an economic floor. They were, he was talking about them. They were coming over. Those are the people that were coming over here on those boats. Those are the people that are on these records also. And I also stated a big hint. Now I gotta remember the name of that church. Man, I just said this the other day. The church, oh man, but this big, I'm talking about this is a huge church uh, that has a mammoth amount of lands in the mountains that are keeping records. I'm talking about keeping these records so tight that it's in a vault that can withstand an oh, 
and it's underground. But this church, and matter of fact, you can look at Ancestry.com. They're telling you that they're getting their records from that church. That church kept all the microfilms that was allegedly burned, smoked out, remember? During the uh, Racial Integrity Act of 1924, they got all of those records and they admitted they did that uh, they did not put all of them inside of the computer system that they have. So you mean to tell me that you got thousands and thousands and thousands of records that none of our ancestors know about, but they kept them. Now we know at that time it wasn't thousands of them and they admitted it. So whose records are they keeping? Remember when I told you that the historic churches is another good place when you're doing your genealogy is another good place to uh, check out and see, especially of that particular county uh, that your family was born and raised in or your ancestors rather, or your elders rather. It's a, it's a good method to go to these. I mean, of course you could go to the vital statistics and try uh, to access uh, the birth and death certificates or whatever certificates that they may have at that time. And of course the Library of Congress, but you can also, excuse me, National Archives, but you can also utilize uh, these historic churches, big, massive churches, churches. They will have these records. I mean, these are the people that came first. They were called missionaries. Okay. They were called missionaries. Um, you know, I'm not even going to get into that. That's a whole nother story. We're not even going to get into that. But yes, don't turn your nose up to their records. Because they will have more authentic records than there than the National Archives. They're keeping the microfilms also. Okay, now what was your question? Um, how would I go about, um, like if I'm filling out an application or something, um, you know, they have like African American. Don't, uh, don't, but, don't do that. Don't do yeah, that. How would I go oh, okay. If, I mean, if they have a mark for American Indian, mark American Indian. Um, okay. If they have a one for other, put other. Okay. Because one of my um, clients who uh, here I do, um, I noticed that on her applications, uh, she was helping her daughter with her college application. Um, and like an essay she had to do for um, a scholarship. And she had to fill out an application and she will always put other. So I, I always wonder why she always put other, but I never asked her. So. Of course. And then look, and then ask, I mean, no, no, this is no shot to any of them. Okay. I, I come, cause I know you guys are watching. Okay. Uh -huh. I have no problem with you. I want to mention this right now. I'm putting that disclaimer out right now, but ask any real authentic African or uh, Latino or Latina what they put. Okay. They put white. They put white. Wow. And as a matter of fact, even on their driver's licenses and other licenses that they had by the state, it's white. Wow. So now, so I work with, a, I work with a few Africans. Um, I'm really close to them. So I'm definitely going to ask them, um, yeah. you know, like if I can see their IDs or what they put on applications. Now, be real, real, be real easy with that. Cause they don't like to do that. But at the same time, like, I'm pretty sure you could, I'm not saying that you should, no, hold on, let me not say that. Let me not say persuade them into doing that. But yeah, right. if they'd be willing to show that, yeah. Yeah, and don't be like, oh my God. Don't, just to be like, oh, okay. And keep it moving, okay? I can't, ask, like, I can't ask why. Like, just, I, I wouldn't ask them why. I wouldn't, I, I really wouldn't. Okay. I really wouldn't, I wouldn't ask them why. I mean, I could tell you why. And here's one thing. I'll just throw that out there. They're in a totally different tax bracket from us for a reason. Right. Okay. For a big reason. And as a matter of fact, this is how you know that it's not that many pale faces that reside in the United States because they're also counting, like I said, Africans, Middle, Middle Easterns, uh, Latinos, Latinas. They're they putting them all in one group and label them uh, Mexicans and yeah, or labeling them as white. And it's a reason why. Of course, if you have African friends, look at, look, look at, see if you can take a look at their IDs. Uh, the nationality ID is another one. You know, um, the nationality ID is also stating white. There's no if, ass, or bus about it. That's exactly what's going on. 
So those people that are out there claiming that they are uh, Pan-African, check and see if their IDs say black or white. <laughs> Umar Johnson. Like I was into him for a while until I discovered you. You said, wait a minute. You was following what now? Um, Dr. Umar Johnson. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. And um I watched like all the hidden colors, uh, movies and everything. And now just like all the information is irrelevant, you know, to yeah. what everything you're saying, so well, no, yeah, thank you. yeah, I mean, and, and, and they see that, you know, a lot of them do see that. A lot of them reached out to me and stated I'm doing a good job. And there's a lot of them that are getting, you know, real tight about it because, of course, it's affecting their pockets. Right. So we know that they were in there for a particular agenda and not for the liberation of our people. I see. Um, <laughs> you know, period. You know, I mean, because if you're for our people, you wouldn't be sitting up there continuously stating lies. When you now know it's a lie, let's, I'm just giving you the benefit of the doubt that you didn't know. But right. now you know and you still going, then we know who you are. You know, I'm not, see this is the reason why I don't link up with anybody. I'm not joining with this person, that person, this group, that organization, this belief, that belief. I'm not doing none of that. I'm Dane Calloway and I'm gonna stay to myself. <laughs> But I'm going to tell my people exactly what's going on. Look, here's the information. You don't got to believe me. I don't. I want you to believe me, but you don't have to. I want you to do your own research because I'm just here to make you think about the things that I present. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm not I'm not about to be knocking those people. You know, those people ain't necessarily. I mean, the people that you mentioned ain't reach out or say anything bad about me. So I'm not going to say anything bad about them. But of course, you know, there are other people surrounding that particular uh, group, I'll say. Um, yeah, that are doing technically the same things. But it's it, all of this stuff is coming to light now. There is a positive change that is happening and it's going viral. And it's going viral. It's streamlining from everybody, celebrities, doctors, um, anthropologists, scientists, teachers, professors. It's happening government workers believe it or not they know what's up they know what's going on um and i want them to continuously come out come out and tell people the truth come out and tell them the truth because that's an impact that's going to impact us for a benevolent future for a benevolent future i mean we all, we got children here that are coming up y'all we can't let these people that, that, you know, teach us these lies that was uh, created and cultivated by our enemies, we can't continue for that to happen generation after generation after generation. What is it doing? It's forcing our offsprings to become hopeless, to become like they, they can't do anything for themselves, but yet they want to invent something. Uh, they want them to be inventors. They want them to be doctors. They want them to be so many great things and they can be, <clears throat> excuse me but it's up under their rules and regulations and how they wanted to do it step by step here's their commandments this is how they wanted you know this is how they want it done and it shouldn't be that way we should be able to progress and learn on our own we shouldn't have to have people dictate what we learn about um you know and then and then they want to say well yeah well history was written by the winners and i just said this not i keep saying this no it's not because if it was written by the winners, they wouldn't have to lie. So it was written by the losers. Why? Because only a loser would have to create a story to make it seem as if they won when they didn't. I'm just here to make you think.